I am very fortunate that I actually have three of the pieces of the new collection around the world in 80 days. Um, I'm sure a lot of you out there will know that we have had a literary collection before, which was The Little Prince. So we're continuing this idea of having a collection based not around the writer, but actually around a particular story. So we've taken the idea of Around the World in 80 Days by Jules Verne. Um, if you have a look on one of my cameras, it should say Simon Weir close up. And hopefully you will be able to see in a little bit more detail the first piece that I'd like to show you. Now, I'm sure a lot of you have either read the book or maybe you've seen the movie, but in case you haven't, I'll give you a little bit of a synopsis of the story. So based in the late 1800s, um, the journey really began in London and the main character, the main protagonist was Phileas Fogg. And he was a gentleman of means, meaning that he didn't really have to work. And he would spend his days in the Reform Club in London. Um, and he was a little bit of a gambler. He'd spend his days playing whist, uh, which was a little bit like cribbage. Um, and one day when he was reading the Daily Telegraph, an article had been written explaining how a new railroad had been opened up in the subcontinent of India. And the journalist believed that it was possible for someone to travel the world in 80 days using all these new forms of transport. So we've taken that idea. And for this particular series, we're actually only focusing on the first 18 days of the journey. So we begin with this stunning blue color. And we've actually, it's the first time that Mont Blanc's used this particular shade of blue. We've actually mixed two colors together. We have Mediterranean sea blue, and we also have what we call London purple. So the idea is here that we represent the reform club in London where he began, but then also the first part of the journey across the Mediterranean. If we look at the cap top in detail, we see the steamship Mongolia that has been laser engraved. And then we also, and I know on the camera, you may not see it fully, but we have this wave design and our design team actually took this from drawings during the Victorian age. And then around the cap top, you'll see that we have the engraving for the 80 days. And on the cone of the writing instrument, if you can see very clearly, we have some rivets which really represent that industrial revolution at that time. So here we'll have the Lagrange size in resin. We will also have it in the classic size. And then from the pure resin edition, we also have what we call our solitaire duet. So this is where we mix two different materials. And I'm really hoping that on the camera, you get to see this fantastic translucent lacquer, which is really a degradé effect. And depending on how you capture it in the light, it really goes from this really dark, deep blue thinking of the sea, right the way through to this very light, almost purpley color. And then here you can see on the cap top, the waves much more clearly engraved. And if we look round on the clip, you'll see if I can just bring it into the right light for you, give me a second. You should hopefully see the Ace of Spades because this was the highest card that you could have when you played whist. And as I say, Phileas Fogg was his gambling man and he had around about 40,000 pounds wealth. And he actually wagered 20,000 pounds on this bet that he could travel the world in 80 days. And then on top of that, he used the other 20,000 pounds of his wealth to actually pay for the journey. So this is, as I say, what we call the solitaire duet, which comes in the classique sites. And then finally in the collection, we bring all of those different elements together. So you can see this beautiful dark blue lacquer. You see the striking Victorian wave design, both on the cap and on the barrel. And then you see this beautiful little plaque with the steamship engraved on it. And I was actually chatting to one of our design team and I said, well, where did you get the idea of the plaque? 
and she was looking through uh, pictures of some of these old gentlemen's clubs in London. And if you could imagine the bar area, you would have had the crystal decanters and around the top of each of the decanters, you would have had these little plaques telling you which drink was inside. So we've really kept all of the design elements from that period of time. Of course, within the collection, we will also have a limited edition ink. And there will be, as Claire said, the notebook to accompany this. 